Hey y'all, it's another uh, foot on the dashboard kind of kind of day. Um, I'm going to try to be ruminative here, and uh, it facilitates my ruminative ruminativeness, my rumination uh, uh, abilities. If I don't, um, if I'm not self-conscious about being the center of attention, you know, having my having my gorgeous face blasted before millions and millions of people. Um, normally I'm okay with that because I am a rock star, but, but uh, I do have a shy side as well, believe it or not. So here I'm just going to be kicking back a little bit and, uh, and ruminating. And what I'm ruminating on today is how dystopia is here. <clears throat> Dystopia snuck up on us, you know, and, and, um, I think you have to be my age or, or at least, you know, closer to my age, uh, to, to understand what I am talking about. Because if you're, if you're like in your twenties, I, I don't really know to, if you, I don't know if you so much ever saw the change take place. I mean, maybe like if you're, cause, because if you're in your twenties, you know, for, for all of your conscious life, you've been in a world, uh, where, where people are online a lot. Um, and, uh, you know, maybe when you were a little kid, the the the, inter the internet was just in its infancy. But, but since you came into awareness of things, you you were aware that uh, the um, that that uh, the internet was just uh, prevalent a prevalent uh, part of society uh, and the notion of things existing without there being an internet <laughs> is something that, I mean, you can understand intellectually in the same way that I can understand living in a world without television or without radio or without automobiles. But, but, uh, but you really, you can only, it's only a matter of speculation for you. For me, it was lived reality for, for people my age and older than me. And, and people, some people younger than me, too. Uh, again, I'm 52. So, um, so I, I, um, I think that <clears throat> I remember when I was uh, teaching English composition a little while ago, I, one of the things I would do is I would, um, have the students write about their, their 9-11 stories. Um, like what, how do you remember 9-11? Like what, what, uh, what are your, th what, what was the day like for you? Um, and, uh, you know, what, what meaning did it have for you? And, you know, because it's, it's one of the few galvanizing moments that, that people, uh, people who, uh, who were alive, uh, who, people who today, uh, can, can generally be said to be alive in 2023 were, were, were mostly alive in 2001 or, or to a, to, to a great extent, to a greater extent than the Kennedy assassination, you know? which was another, you know, another galvanizing moment of where were you when, dot, dot, dot. Um, you know, the, the space shuttle exploding, that wasn't really quite the same. That was in the 80s. And then it happened again later. There was another space shuttle. That's uh, another ill-fated space shuttle mission. Um, but anyway, um, I so, so I would assign that, and, and at, at first, because when I started teaching, it was 2005. That was the first year I began teaching on the college level. I had taught a little bit before that, but, but never on the college level before. 
And, um, you know, for, for, at first it, people was, it was fresh in everybody's mind. And, uh, uh, and so they had interesting, interesting stories to tell. And then, and then as the years went on and, and the date got more and more remote, it was like they had, uh, less and less to say. It was like, well, I was in third grade and I remember everybody going crazy about something and I didn't really see the big deal. I didn't, it didn't mean anything to me <laughs> because that's what, when you're, when you're a little kid, I mean, unless, um, uh, unless you have some direct experience with, with a tragic event, it's, it's not that you, um, it's not that you're callous about it. Uh, it's just, just, you know, you're more in your own world and stuff that happens. That's not in your own little world. You, you, uh, you tend to just, just shrug it off and, and go on with things. I mean, that's the way we all have a degree of, uh, um, what's the word? I'm trying to think of a specific word compartmentalization. That was the word I was looking for. We all do that to, to one degree or, or other for, for most of our lives. It doesn't mean we're bad people. It doesn't mean we're callous. It doesn't mean that we don't care uh, about human suffering. It just means, you know, we, we live subjective lives and when things happen to us that are in our immediate line of vision, so to speak, it tends to, uh, to mean a lot more to us. If somebody else's mom dies, uh, you know, in Indonesia, I'm, of course, I think it's sad, but if, uh, my friend's mom dies, then I'm, I'm, then I'm sadder. And if my mom dies, I'm the saddest, you know? <sighs> so anyway, uh, so it got more and more that like the 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 uh, the essays they would write uh, would would get more and more just sort of vague or um, like you know they would be they would be less and less like oh my god we're going to war oh my god the world's ending and and more and more like well I was just a little kid and I didn't really understand what was going on that kind of thing, you know, and, and I, and I had this, this regular teaching job, uh, for a good, like 11 years, 12 years or so before I moved on. And, uh, yeah, so, so that was something that I, I remember noticing. And so I think that since, since in some ways 9-11 was the beginning of our tumble into dystopia. Um, you know, it, 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 there, it, it maybe started before that, the, 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 the roots are certainly deeper than that, but I would say that it was the, the event which, which kicked it all off. Um, but it still, it still snuck up on us. Um, I, and, and I, this is, a, this is something I've said, I know I've said this before and, and I don't, I don't want to be tedious or sound like a broken record here, but I, I have, I, it, it's still, it's still striking to me how I can watch a movie or a TV show, uh, on Netflix or, or, or wherever Amazon prime or, or whatever. Um, you know, from, from not that long ago, from 10 years ago, let's say, you know, I, I, you know, I, I liked the show community. I thought it was very funny. Still do. I remember what, so, and I think that was the example that I've, I've used before, although maybe it was on my old channel, um, uh, where I, I talked about watching some specific episodes and thinking to myself, they wouldn't be able to make those jokes today or, or today. If those jokes were made, that would be just so edgy. It'd be like, wow, they're really being edgy. And, but in 2009, 2010, 2011, it was just sort of like, okay, well, yeah, it's funny. It's funny. No big deal. It's funny. No, uh, nobody's offended. It's funny. But, uh, but at some point, 
uh, along the way. I don't, and I don't know if there was, if there has been, and there, there's, there's no. I know people have have uh, written me, and they have their theories and stuff, and that's fine. Um, but I, I, I don't know if we can trace it to any, uh, any one thing. But, but, uh, I, I, I will, would say that there was nowhere near the sense of things unraveling just a mere ten years ago. Just even, even eight years ago. Eight years ago, 2015, I guess that would have been the very start of it. That would have been the start, the 2015. Um, so it's it's but but it's it, it was weird because now that I look back on the aughts, it seems like a time of general, you know, incredible freedom, where you know you, you, the the there was some of what today gets called woke, what was then still being called politically correct or, or whatever, whatever term they had for it. I don't know if there were other terms. You still, you still had some of that, but it wasn't like it was everywhere. It wasn't like in every sitcom, in every commercial, uh, in every, you know, and I, I know I'm being, I'm exaggerating things a little bit, but I'm, I'm not all that much. Like, um, like the, the the times I've I've watched things with commercials in them, you know, it's like uh, here's some medicine for HIV, and <laughs> it's like or 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 we're we're having a, 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 a uh, we're we're having a a a quarrel as a married couple, and it's two women or or two men you know, uh, you know, and they're presenting it like, it's just uh, like, uh, d domestic, uh, domestic situation. Ha uh, ha Can't we all relate? No, actually we can't. Most of us can't. Um, or, or of course the mixed race stuff, which is much more, much more prevalent. Um, um, where the, the, the massive push for all of that began, uh, you know, it, 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 it's like you, you compare now to, uh, 2008, 2009, 2010, 2011, it was there, there was nowhere near, you, you could walk, I mean, you could still, um, turn on the Disney channel and, and see shows with all, with casts that are all white. Okay. There was nowhere near this push to to uh, say you know white white people bad uh, more di diversity good diversity equals fewer white people white people bad uh, you know and and to make every couple a mixed race couple and or the ones that aren't mixed race to make them gay couples um, so anyhow and this sort of situation where. Ooh, you better watch what you say and what what you what, better watch what you say in. <laughs> better watch what you're saying, or you're gonna be in trouble. Um, you know, there was a little bit of that. That well, in, in the '90s, the '90s was where that kicked off. Um, you know, people t using terms like history. Ugh. Why do you call it history? Why why not call it herstory? Um, I mean, they were really serious. They seriously, <laughs> it seems so laughable now. I mean, it always was laughable, but, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's no more, it, it, it's, it's no less absurd than, than gender fluid stuff or tran, tranny stuff or lots of the stuff, the, the pronoun stuff. But any, but, uh, anyway, the, the nineties was when it really, there was the, the first wave of it. And I remember you, you, you know, you weren't supposed to say girls, like any, anyone who was, 
if there was a uh, if there was a twenty year old female, you called her a woman. <laughs> now, now that's even controversial. <laughs> How dare you assume that she's a woman? Back then, the, it was just like you know. Uh, no, it's demeaning to say that she's a girl. If she's she's a seventeen year old woman, call her a woman. Treat her with, you know, have respect. Call her a woman. Um, and uh, you know that that was a, this whole don't don't say they're girls, say they're women. That that was a thing. That's really not a thing anymore. <laughs> you know, like no one really bats an eye if you, if you call a twenty five year old female a girl. Um, you know, uh, uh, you know, unless you're assuming her, her gender, but that's just in certain cases. Um, but those were the the first indications of this this kind of uh, this 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 new kind of tyranny. It was like liberal tyranny, you know. Uh, that that was like a a novelty at the time, like. No, well, the liberals are supposed to be the ones who are against tyranny, and it's the conservatives who who want there to be, you know, uh, more, who just just roll their eyes when you talk about human rights and and uh, you know that they're they think the police should just go in and take care of business and and uh, you know rah rah war on drugs you know. Uh, <laughs> It's it's uh, it's fascinating <clears throat> to go down memory lane in that in that sort of way, um, and uh, now things are uh, the paradigm is quite different, isn't it? But I don't even and I, I've probably said this before. I didn't I didn't see that they would start saying well uh, they would start justifying censorship in the name of quote unquote misinformation. I remember the very beginning of that. I remember, I remember recording a, um, a segment. I, I, at the time I had a podcast called the nameless podcast, uh, on uh, SoundCloud. And I remember, um, I remember something caught my attention that I didn't hear anybody else talking about. It was when Obama was still the president and he said something like, you know, we, we need to have a, a curator of truthiness on the internet. Now we're not talking about censorship. We just said, we just need to, we do, you know, uh, have a curator, curator of truthiness and use that, that, that Stephen Colbert term truthiness. Uh, fuck Stephen Colbert. Anyway, <laughs> that's a different, different uh, subject. But but he 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 put it in that sort of cutesy way, like using the term truthiness. Uh, but but he, he but what he was saying was basically what we what. what totally what we have right now. And I remember, I remember sounding the alarm on it. Like, what do you mean? Uh, who's going to be the curate? Who's going to curate? Who's going to decide what's true and what isn't, you know, all the, all the sort of reasonable questions that should come to a person's mind. But I don't remember any, but I don't remember, remember that being, I don't remember that causing any kind of sensation at all. Not my SoundCloud um, podcast, but I, I mean, uh, Obama's words, of course, my SoundCloud podcast was only listened to by a small number of people, but, but, uh, I don't remember people talking about it. I don't remember people honing in on that and, and saying there's danger ahead here. There be tigers. What are they trying to do with this, with this talk of curating the internet? <laughs> and now it's like, like the, the more, the, the, even the, even the less uh, malignant aspect of this, this cure curation, quote unquote, is still annoying as hell. If, if you use any kind of term that just, uh, 
the 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 just ticks the box of the algorithm of like ooh forbidden subject or topic that that needs to be topic that needs to be curated you know you you do a youtube video and you use the term flat earth for for example i'm not even on the flat earth bandwagon i don't it's, it's not my thing but i've i've done a couple videos where i i think i've used flat earth in the title and the, and it gets you know the wikipedia entry about flat earth is a is a far right conspiracy theory or blah 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 um where they're basically telling you how how you should think what you what you should think how you should feel about this that or the other thing because people just can't be allowed to to uh, sort things out and decide for themselves they have to be protected from misinform quote unquote misinformation by uh, by having the misinformers be censored you know be uh, be uh, and it's not censorship. It's, it's it's nothing. It's not the first. There's no First Amendment issue. We're just curtailing your ability to to uh, to talk about certain things. That's not the First Amendment. That has nothing to do with freedom of speech. All the disingenuous arguments. Like it's a private platform. You know the thing is, you would hear. In the 80s and 90s, you'd hear conservatives saying things like that. Um, but, oh gosh, where am I going with all of this? This has been somewhat rambling, but uh, I think I should I should uh, bring it to a to a close here. Um, I, I I suppose my my overarching point is uh, that dystopia snuck up on us. We, we were, you know, we were anticipating dystopia, uh, a dystopia taking hold at some point in the future. Like, what's it going to be like when, when everything is dystopic? Like that, that was, that, that's been a, a source of literary inspiration and a, and a source of social anxiety for, you know, lots of people for a long time. You know, Orwell wrote back in the forties. Or Orwell wrote his his masterpiece back in nineteen forty eight, or that was when the year it was published. Huxley, uh, you know, many like even a decade before that in the early thirties. Uh, although I know Huxley is sus. I think Orwell is cool. Orwell is cool, but Huxley is sus. Because Huxley has all all of these connections to to uh, unsavory, powerful groups, and it may, you know when when you find out about these things, it makes you wonder if Brave New World w w wasn't so much a uh, a warning about the future as it was a blueprint for the future, under the guise of being a warning about the future. It's it's heady stuff to think in that way. I know I know it's it's like that it kind of makes your head spin. Uh but but I think from what I can tell Orwell was not um did not have those kinds of connections. I think Orwell was a uh a, a man of conscience um who was somewhat in despair about where he saw things heading. Because of the, the time that he spent amongst the uh, the left, um, and being a you know a man of left wing uh, thought, generally speaking, but you know he saw things happening, uh, and uh, he he uh, he could see the shape of things to come, I think, which I think is the name of another dystopian novel, if I'm not mistaken, unless less important one. Um, so it is, so, you know, we've been, we've been thinking, when is dystopia happen? When, when is dystopia gonna, when are, when are we going to find out that, you know, all of uh, our, our rights and privileges and freedoms and all the things we take for granted are, you know, 
we've got to be on guard. We, we, you know, we, we've got to be, the, the price of freedom is eternal vigilance and, and all of that. But, but then it just happened. And dystopia is here. It's suddenly here. Now, it can get worse. Don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm afraid it is. I'm afraid it's going to get worse. I hope it doesn't, but, but I, I feel, I feel in my gut the same way that I think most of you do, that it is going to get worse. Um, and that these, these trends are going to accelerate. We've, we've seen a massive acceleration. They've kicked things into, into a new gear in the last seven or eight years, especially. Um, so, uh, so it, 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 it happened, you know, almost, uh, uh, I don't want to say surreptitiously, but it happened without us really, it, without us noting that it was happening when it was happening. Except me. <laughs> I'm the only one who said, what exactly do you mean, Obama, when you talk about curating the internet? What do you, what do you mean? I know you're trying to be cutesy with your, your, using your pal Stephen Colbert's term, truthiness and all that. But, but you're, you're, you're saying something serious here. What are you really saying? Well, of course, of course we're not going to censor anything. Um... I can't quite do the, the Obama voice anymore. I couldn't really do it before either. I'm not a, uh, I don't do imitations, but, um, but yeah, but yeah, that, that was, that was something I, I, I raised the alarm about and then it was just sort of, and then it happened. It happened and now it's here and, uh, you know, you just, you, you most people just go along to get along, which is, I mean, I, it's, it's disappointing, but that's, that's, that's the way, uh, the way of things. So this video has gotten long. I think maybe I'll, I'll do another video where I'm, where you're looking at my, my feet. Um, and, uh, I'll, I'll talk about how, you know, the, the massive acceleration that's happened, uh, that, that was, you know, totally unforeseen. Uh, you know, of that being of the last three years, but, uh, for now I'll stick with, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to end this. Wow. This is long. Okay. Uh, thank you for watching this to the end. I hope you got something out of it. Leave your comments below.